you to hate the texture of your hair? Who taught you to hate the color of your skin to such an extent that you bleed to get like the white man? L. Hodge, Malik L. Shabazz, a.k.a. Malcolm X. Malcolm Little was born on May 19, 1925 in Omaha, Nebraska, to parents Earl Little and Louise Norton. His parents were both members of Marcus Garvey's Universal Negro Improvement Association. Earl Little was known as an outspoken Baptist preacher who took a strong stance against racism. Because of his father's stance against racism, Malcolm's family experienced death threats from the Ku Klux Klan and other whites who opposed his father. Because of the threats to his family, they moved several times, eventually settling outside of East Lansing, Michigan in 1929. Two years later, Earl Little was murdered by a band of whites who disliked his opposition to their system of white supremacy. His death was ruled an accidental suicide, but neither his family nor his neighbors believed the official report. After the loss of his father, Malcolm's family experienced economic hardships, which took a toll on his family's quality of life. The constant threats along with the economic hardships took a toll on Malcolm's mother. She eventually experienced a decline in her mental health, and she was declared legally insane by the state and committed to a Michigan mental asylum. Malcolm's early childhood experiences with racism toward his family left a bitter taste in his mouth towards white. Despite his adversity, he continued to excel academically in all white school settings. Once Malcolm was told by one of his white male teachers that it was unrealistic for a nigga to think that he could be a lawyer. This experience did not help motivate Malcolm to continue excelling academically. He eventually dropped out of school and was placed in several juvenile delinquent homes until he left Michigan for Boston in 1941. Malcolm found several different jobs on the railroads between New York and Boston. He also began engaging in criminal activity. Malcolm Little had transformed into Detroit Red and was living a life of crime before he was eventually arrested and convicted of burglary and sentenced to prison in 1946. During his time in prison, Malcolm met a man by the name of Brother Reginald who introduced him to a life outside of the prison he existed in physically and mentally. He taught Malcolm about Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam. He also taught Malcolm why it was important to love himself and his blackness. This was the beginning of the transformation from Detroit Red to Malcolm X. He delved deeper into the teachings of Elijah Muhammad and eventually became a member of the Nation of Islam and a devout follower of the Islamic religion. In 1952, Malcolm was paroled from prison and began studying directly under Elijah Muhammad. That same year, he also changed his name from Malcolm Little to Malcolm X. The surname X represents his name and his heritage that was taken from his ancestors by a slave master. Elijah Muhammad realized that Malcolm had a gift for oration and a passion that burned deep. He was building a large following and helping to bring more attention to the Nation of Islam. The membership of the Nation of Islam increased from around 400 members to about 4,000 members because of Malcolm during the late 1950s and early 60s. His feet did not go unnoticed. He was appointed to minister of New York Temple No. 7 in 1954. Within three years, he was promoted to the national representative of the Nation of Islam, a position that was second to Elijah Muhammad. While ministering at New York Temple No. 7, he further spread the message of Elijah Muhammad by creating the Muhammad Speaks National Newspaper. Malcolm would meet Betty Sanders, who he would eventually marry and have six children with. As the popularity of the Nation of Islam grew, so did white Americans fear of what they call a black Muslim militant group. Malcolm was the most recognizable figure of the Nation of Islam. He appeared on several radio and television shows, debating his critics and spreading Elijah Muhammad's message. During the rise of the Nation of Islam, the civil rights movement was gaining steam and Dr. Martin Luther King emerged as the leader of the movement. Like Malcolm, Dr. King was a very recognizable figure and his words were often criticized. The two men shared different viewpoints pertaining to the liberation of black people from white supremacy. Dr. King was in support of the idea to integrate, while Malcolm believed that blacks should separate from white America and become self-sufficient. While the differences between Malcolm and Dr. King were displayed publicly, the relationship between Malcolm and Elijah Muhammad was becoming unglued and was soon to become public knowledge. Malcolm's political view began to oppose the views of Elijah Muhammad, which began to cause friction in their relationship. 
Malcolm also learned that Elijah Muhammad's personal affairs were not consistent with his moral message. A suspension from the Nation of Islam and the 90-day speaking ban was placed on Malcolm when he stated that the assassination of then-President John F. Kennedy was America's chickens coming home to roost. In 1964, Malcolm parted ways with the Nation of Islam and created the Muslim Mosque, Inc. and the Organization of Afro-American Unity. His next move was a trip through North Africa that would change his views about religion and white people. He was taught by Elijah Muhammad that all white people were the devil and could not make it into the holy city of Mecca. That ideology was proven wrong when Malcolm visited Mecca and worshipped Allah alongside blonde-haired, blue-eyed whites. He then changed his name from Malcolm X to El Haj Malik El Shabazz. He continued to use Malcolm X as his name to the public. During that same trip, he also met with black civil rights leaders and activists from around the globe, and these meetings would prove to be the foundation for the creation of the Organization of Afro-American Unity. Malcolm was attempting to unify with as many African-American leaders as possible to unite as one and build a strong black nation. The relationship between Dr. King and Malcolm was strengthening and a powerful alliance was beginning to form. Many people opposed Malcolm and his actions. He was targeted by the government and the FBI, as well as members of the Nation of Islam. His home was bombed in February of 1965. Seven days later, Malcolm was shot and killed. Many stories exist that speculate he was killed by the Nation of Islam collaborating with the FBI. We do know that a great man was killed, but his legacy and influence only grew stronger. Malcolm was survived by his wife, Betty Shabazz, and his six daughters. He believed that black people in America could live together unify and support themselves without the help of the government or white America. He taught his followers that they were great and powerful people who were in the image of the almighty God. He loved his people and gave his life so we could live free in America. El Hodge Malik El Shabazz, AKA Malcolm X, AKA Malcolm Little, we proudly, proudly stand on your shoulders. For more information, please visit www.ontheshoulders1.com